can all be seated. As we all know, a year on the secular or American calendar is the amount of time it takes for the Earth to rotate around the Sun, divided into 12 periods we all know as months. The Jewish calendar is also divided into 12 months. The difference in the two calendars is that a month on the Jewish calendar starts and ends each new moon, when the first sliver of moon can be seen in the sky. Because of this difference, the Jewish year is only 354 days, 11 days shorter than our 365 day year. This 11 day difference is the cause of holidays being late or early on our solar calendar. As you may realize, if every year holidays get earlier and earlier, holidays like Sukkot, the Jewish harvest festival, could be pushed into summer, which of course would defeat the purpose of the holiday. Early philosophers discovered this problem and created the Jewish calendar leap year. Unlike America's leap year, where we add February 29th every few, four years, the Jewish calendar, in the Jewish calendar, we add another month every few years. The month Adar II is added after the month of Adar every third, sixth, eighth, eleventh, fourteenth, seventeenth, and nineteenth year in a 19-year rotation. The current Jewish leap year cycle started on October 2nd, 1997, or the Jewish year 5755. The Jewish leap year is what keeps Jewish holidays lined up around the same time on the solar calendar each year. As a Jew and an American, both calendars greatly affect my life. In today's busy world, I know I'm not the only one who likes to know what activities I will be doing the next day or where I'll be going in the next week. Paying attention to the Jewish calendar helps me by telling me when, Passover Seder, when the Passover Seder is or when I'm going to the family Hanukkah party. Also, I know that many holidays take place in the Jewish month of Tishrei during September and October, whereas not so many happen in the month of Cheshvan during October and November. This helps me know what services I'll be attending that month and how to plan my other activities. That is why using both the Jewish and American calendar is a necessity in my lifestyle. As I did some research on the Jewish calendar and the leap year, I discovered something that made me think. When the Jewish leap year was introduced, the creators weren't trying to match their calendar up with the solar calendar. It hadn't been invented yet. They were trying to keep it constant to the calendar God gave us, the four seasons. They didn't care that Hanukkah was in December near Christmas, or that Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, happened around the same time that today's school year starts. They wanted to make sure that the Jewish seasonal holidays, like the Harvest Festival Sukkot and the celebration of the trees Tu B'Shvat, happened on their respective season. This idea made me think about our American calendar. As the months go by, I get excited like most people. Excited to go to the beach, excited to play in the raked up leaves or, or snow, excited for the nice warm weather. As I thought about these things, I realized it's not necessarily month that matters to me, it's the season. I realized that in truth, there wasn't much difference in our solar or lunar calendar. Either way, I was following the calendar that God gave us, the seasons. You may or may not be aware of this, but you have just learned exactly half of everything you want to know about Rosh Chodesh. You'll learn the other half in just a few minutes after the reading of the Torah. And the reading of the Torah is going to begin this morning on page 929. You can find it in the Kumash, the larger text that you see, the traditional reading for Rosh Chodesh. Those honored with Aliyot this morning, Uh, grandparents, Sam and Phyllis Sizenwine, have the honor of the first Aliyah. Grandparents, Sid and Bert Dratch, have the honor of Shani, the second Aliyah, mom and dad. Marty and Barry have the honor of Shlishi, the third Aliyah. Ravi, the fourth Aliyah, will be shared by Rabbi Joel and Heidi Sizenwine, uncle and aunt. 
and aunt and cousin, Ellen and Lauren Freeman, after which uh, Michael will be calling his brothers to the Torah, each as a bar mitzvah. Once again, we'll be reading the, find the beginning of the reading of the Torah for this Rosh Chodesh day, 28th chapter of Bimi Debar, the book of Numbers, chapter 28, 929. Veti gale vetera e malko to alen of his man caro. Fiachon, play taten of play tatamo, bet Israel, a cane, all the chesed, lerachem, mulat over a mara main. Ha call, have go de leloheinu, put no cavod la torah. Shmuel ben Herschel, a cohenu Miriam, Fegel bat chaim vijeni. Baruch shenatan torah la amo Israel, big to chateau. Ya tema de kim barana lo hekhem khayim kolkhem Continue now with the third Aliyah. Mom and Dad. Ya Abdu Zeev Velvel Avram Ben Shlomo Ubracha Manye Bach Muela Kohen Ubracha Shlishi. Page 
Just a moment, Michael is going to be calling each of his brothers to the Torah for their aliyah as a bar mitzvah. To introduce calling his brothers to the Torah, Michael's going to sing a contemporary song composed by Debbie Friedman 
that's based on the words of the Torah from the book of Genesis, Lech Lecha, Lech Lecha to go forth on this day when Michael's two brothers go forth in life, each as a bar mitzvah. Lech Lecha to a land that I will show you. Lech to a place you do not know. be a blessing, and you shall be a blessing, and you shall be a blessing, Lechila, Lechila, and I shall make your name great, Lechila, and I shall praise your name, Lechila. There is a tradition that goes back to medieval Jewish times that when a little Jewish boy was born, they would prepare a swaddling cloth for him, uh, which came to be known as a wimple, and he would be wrapped in that wimple and brought into his family's gathering on the eighth day of his life, and he would be entered into the breed, the covenant of the Jewish people. They would then save that wimple, they would save that swaddling cloth for 13 years, and it would be used to cover and to wrap the Torah on his bar mitzvah day, and they might save it in those days just a few more years uh, to be used as part of his chuppah, his wedding canopy. You guys can wait a little bit longer than just a few years for that moment in your lives. Uh, and uh, Marty has made a beautiful wimble for each of the two boys becoming bar mitzvah today. You can see here uh, Brian's, his name in English, in Hebrew, Baruch Hayim, tablets of the Luchot Habrit. Ten great declarations in the center. So we'll place this wimple on the Torah. Michael now, as you call Brian to the Torah for his aliyah as a bar mitzvah. Ya'amod, 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 ya'amod. Have a whore, have a mitzvah. Brohaim ben zev v'chofram v'manya maftir hazah. For Brian Zaliyah, we return back to page 929, chapter 28, verses 1 to 5. Ibrahim. 
ברוך אתנאי, אלוהינו מלך העולם, אשר נתן לנו תורה אמת בחיי עולם, נתן בתוכנו, ברוך אתה אדוני, נותן התורה. אמן. So we'll cover the Torah now with this wimple that Marty made for this day of Tyler becoming a Bar Mitzvah, and Michael, once again, if we can ask you, doing double duty this morning, to call your brother Tyler to the Torah for his Aliyah as a Bar Mitzvah. Ya'amod, 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 ha'bahor, ha'bah mitzvah, r'shonatan ben zev v'chot ram v'manya maftir azah. Tyler's Torah portion we'll find at the top of page 931, verses 11 to 15. Baruch Hu Adonai Cham Borach Baruch Hu Adonai Cham Borach Leolam Ba'ed Baruch Hu Adonai Cham Borach Leolam Ba'ed Baruch Hu Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Rachar Banu Mikol Hamim V'Natam Lanu Et Torato Baruch Hu Atah Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen Uvrashei Chad Shechem Takrivu Olaat Ladonai Parim b'nei v'akar, sinayim v'ayil echad, kivasim b'nei shana, shivat mimim, ushlosha sronim. So let me chabalula b'ashemen, la par ha'echad, ushnei sronim. So let me chabalula b'ashemen, la ayil ha'echad, v'isavroni savron. So let me chabalula b'ashemen, Lakeves hachad, olat reyach nichuach ishel Adonai v'nizkehem chati chahin yihye lapar ulshishi tahin la'ayo or v'yi tahin lakeves yayin zotolat chodesh b'chadsho l'chadshay hashana v'siri zimechad l'chadat Adonai alulat hatamid Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Natan Lanu Torah Emet Bechaye Olam Nata Betochenu Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah Let's all rise as the Torah is about to be lifted.
can all be seated. Okay. My Torah portion also talks about the customs and laws of Rosh Chodesh. In times of the temple, people would look in the night sky and look at the moon, the basis for the lunar calendar. If someone saw the first sliver of moon, they would rush to the Sanhedrin to report the sighting. The Sanhedrin was the Jewish court. When two people had reported a sighting of the moon, the shofar was sounded to mark the beginning of the new month. The first day of the new month started a one to two day festival depending on the month. During this celebration, there were special prayers, families had festive meals, and women took off of work. Women were honored because they continued to believe in Moses when he made his way up Mount Sinai to receive the Ten Commandments. Rosh Chodesh is sometimes known as a day to honor women. In ancient times, Rosh Chodesh was considered a very important holiday. This was because it kept the calendar in line. If the Jews knew when the first of the month was, they also knew when, the ho when their holidays took place. If the Jews did not know when the first of the month began, their whole calendar would be thrown off. I believe there is another reason that Rosh Chodesh was so important in biblical times. I think that this holiday was so important because it helped the Jewish people stick together. Every month, the Jewish people would celebrate the new month by coming together and having festive meals. This was one of many ways the Jewish people stuck together. Throughout history, Jewish people have felt that it was important to stay together and help each other during hard times. For example, when the Romans captured the city of Judea, the Israelites were forbidden to study Torah. The Jews were very strong and secretly studied Torah together. Also, during the Holocaust, the Jews stayed together and many survived because they worked together. I consider the value of sticking together timeless. I think the Jews have, stick, have stuck together and always will. Today we have events at the synagogue like the Shabbat dinners and the Tu B'Shabbat Seder that bring the congregation together. This helps to make the community stronger and able to thrive. When I am at services at a youth group event or at Hebrew school, I feel very connected to the Jewish community. At Camp Ramah, I pray and spend time with other Jewish kids. At camp, I feel a sense of community because we do everything together. We lose the sense of time and other things that we usually find very important in daily life. We are isolated in a place where we follow the Jewish laws and customs, almost forgetting the world outside of camp. I feel lucky to live where I do, with people of many different cultures celebrating many different religions. I enjoy learning about other people's heritages and beliefs, but sometimes it's nice to step into the synagogue and feel that sense of community that my ancestors did when they looked up at the sky searching for the first sliver of moon. So now you can all feel secure and satisfied that you know everything there is to know about Rosh Chodesh. Let's turn to the service. We're returning the Sefer Torah to the Aron Kodesh. We'll arise. Barry, Marty, Michael, if you'll join us on the Bima. As we rise, we find ourselves on page 89. Ye hallelu et shem Adonai, ki nizkaf shem olevato, hoto al eretz,
with joy and gratitude. We praise you, O Lord our God, for giving us life, sustaining us, and enabling us to reach this season. For each of the days that we prayed for the gift of parenthood, you have blessed us tenfold. We are blessed with Michael, his boundless joy for life and insight beyond his years. We are blessed with Brian, his deep compassion, understanding, and warmth. We are blessed with Tyler, his sense of responsibility to both his family and the world beyond. God, give us the strength and wisdom to know when to take their arms and lead the way, when to hold their hands and walk beside them, and when to step back, offering love and support as they make their journey into the world. We wish for our sons a life of love, friendship, purpose, and compassion. May they continue to grow in body and mind, in soul and character, honoring the house of Israel and bringing glory to your name. Amen. transition into more of a holiday mode of the service, and as we feel even more of the holiday of Rosh Chodesh, we therefore remove our tefillin. So for those of us wearing tefillin, just give us a few moments and we'll remove the tefillin. Uh, if there's been something you've been just waiting to say to someone sitting near you, use this time. Try to discuss amongst yourselves. And we'll be back. That Tyler first entered this world, and but a moment, a minute later, Brian followed in his footsteps, so to speak. So uh, let's see, with Tyler being the firstborn, that means I would like to speak to first Brian. <laughs> no, Brian, my friend, having seen you grow up in our synagogue these past years, I, I think that I have a pretty good sense of you and who Brian Dratch is and who you are and how you are. Uh, but I've been learning even more things about you in the recent past. I've been hearing things about you. People are talking about you, Brian. Do you know that? People are talking about you. I was up at Camp Ramah the day that you came home, right? Because you were there, you and your brother were there for four weeks. And the day that you came home, that Sunday morning, I went up for a visiting day to see my stepdaughter, Samara. And someone from your Ada came running over to me, knowing that I'm your rabbi. And she said, Brian and Tyler, Dratch. They were the two best chanichim in, in camp. It was the two best campers in camp. And uh, I, was, I was happy to hear it. I was thrilled to hear it. Wasn't so surprised to hear it, right? Knowing you two guys, that there at Camp Ramon the Pocados, which is you know, filled with terrific kids, Jewish commitment, that they would say, you and your brother, you are like the two best chanichim in class. And then I've been learning some things about you that I would not necessarily know by seeing you here in the synagogue, either at services or in Hebrew school. I, I kind of had a sense just seeing you around that, you know, you're kind of like an easygoing guy and uh, things don't ruffle your feathers so much. I know that you have a sense of responsibility and you express that in how you are in class and how you study and how you've done over the years. Then I came to learn new things about you, that you really have a, a wonderfully artistic nature, right? Very creative, whether it's painting or drawing or sculpting or doodling, cartooning, right? There's, there's like this ongoing creative spirit that's coming out of you, Brian. 
You're wonderfully musical. You play the uh, piano and the trombone, two very similar instruments. Right? <laughs> piano and the trombone. And uh, one of your goals with the trombone is to make it to the school's jazz band, right? Make it to the school's jazz band. Especially what happened this past week. Keep that spirit of jazz alive in America. You know, we say, Kimi Tzion Tetzei Torah, for out of Zion comes forth Torah. Well, you know, in terms of jazz in America, it's out of New Orleans comes, comes jazz. And, you know, I heard some of the best jazz, Preservation Hall in Al Hertz Place in the French Quarter. So uh, keep playing the trombone and play some good, play some good jazz. Creative, musical, easygoing, artistic, responsible. But then Michael gave me the real insight into you, Brian, right? Michael, we were sitting in my study, right? And when some people might have thought you weren't paying all that much attention, you gave me the real insight into your brother, Brian, when you said he is mysterious. <laughs> Brian, you are mysterious, man. Look at you. We think we know you. Ah, you are mysterious. So, you know, I started thinking to myself, and, you know, look, I, I guess Michael lives with you and knows you pretty well. Michael, what do, you, what do you mean by mysterious? And I'm trying to kind of like pull a few pieces together. One of the things that makes you mysterious is because you do this exercise. Your brother does it also. You do this uh, exercise that sounds kind of mysterious. It's called Odyssey of the Mind. Doesn't that sound mysterious? Right, you know, you came to something, you know, you're like, bum, 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 you know, Odyssey of the Mind. Well, Odyssey of the Mind is this, tell me if I'm getting it right, it's a team of seven kids, right? And you are presented with some kind of a challenge, and you have to respond to that challenge by creating some kind of a skit. Right? And, uh, you know, it's not just in words, it's in some kind of a very creative skit that you do this odyssey of the mind. Odyssey of the mind, which makes you, Brian, so terribly mysterious. And you have a great team. You've won the regional titles, right? You've gone to the state finals. You've gone to the world competition. Odyssey of the mind. So, my mysterious young man, I want to present you with a challenge today. Okay, how's this, right? This is your challenge. For this day, your odyssey of the mind. Okay, here's what I wrote down as your challenge. Brian, while being part of a small people and a small minority in this country, maintain a strong Jewish identity and a commitment to Jewish life. And if somebody asks why, you can tell them because it's good for us, the Jewish people, and it's good for all people in the world that we can give what we give. Okay, let's see what you're going to do with that, Brian. Huh? Any of the other kids here from um, Odyssey of the Mind? Any other members of your team that are here? Huh, huh, huh? Yeah, there, there you go. Yeah. Well, actually, uh, you can't, usually you give, what, a seven minute skit to respond. This isn't something you respond to in seven minutes, right? It's something that's going to take your whole lifetime to respond to. How to keep the Jewish people alive, Brian? How to keep the Jewish people alive? You know what, even more mysterious than you, this is one of the great mysteries of the world. It really is. It is one of the greatest mysteries of the world of how the Jewish people are still alive today. It's one of the great miracles of the world. There was once an historian who said that we are the fossils of history. We're over, we're done with, right? No, we're here. We're here today. Here we are today, you and your brother becoming bar mitzvah. It's a mystery. It's a miracle. And now it's your responsibility to keep that miracle alive. Your responsibility now as a bar mitzvah to keep that miracle alive. So the challenge that I present to you, a little closer my friend, is not something you respond to in seven minutes, but dedicate the rest of your life, Brian, which I hope and pray is many, 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 many good, wonderful years to responding to my challenge to you this morning. 
how do you maintain the strong identity and commitment to the Jewish people? Well, start with this book, right? Because this is a book that's been keeping us alive since the very beginning, the Torah text from which uh, you read for the first time today, called by your brother to the first time today, the Torah, five books of Moses. This will begin to help you answer my challenge to you. And from the city, the city that has really kept us alive. Because for 2,000 years, wherever we've been, in the most remote parts of the world, our hearts were directed to that city, to Jerusalem, saying, the Shana Habab Yerushalayim, next year in Jerusalem, we should return home. So this Kiddush cup comes from Yerushalayim for you this day of becoming a Bar Mitzvah. And finally, Brian, my friend, to make this all officially official, the Certificate of Bar Mitzvah, presented by Oev Shalom to Brian Howard Dratch, Baruch Chaim. Can't get a better Hebrew name than Baruch Chaim. Baruch, a blessing, Chaim, life. You are a blessed life, Brian. Ben Ze'ev, Velvel, Avram, Umania, who having completed the required studies was duly inducted as a bar mitzvah. On this Rosh Chodesh Elul, Yichel Chol Torah Adonai, may your portion be amongst those who live and labor in the Torah of our God. That's all. I'd like to invite our B'nai Mitzvah's aunt, Heidi Sissenwein, and I'd like to invite cousin, Michael Freeman, who Heidi is going to solo this a cappella, okay. uh, who is going to offer to her nephews, our B'nai Mitzvah, the words and song, Shema B'nai, listen my child. Shema b'ni, take these wings to fly with. Shini b'ti, with these roots you will grow. This is my promise, this is my blessing. You are the promise and you are the blessing. Shema b'ni, shini b'ti, may you live the wonder in this world and those yet to come to care for those who came before you to trust in those who are yet to come Shema B'ni Shimi B'ti Ufro Salenu Ufro Salenu Ufro Salenu May your hearts be filled with wisdom. May your minds be filled with love. May your lips be filled with sweetness. May you shine like the stars above. Shema b'ni, shimi b'ti. And you will fly on wings of eagles, and you will grow to be straight and tall. This is my promise, this is my blessing. You are the promise, and you are the blessing. Shema b'ni, Shema b'ni.
And so, Tyler, here's Shul Natan, if you come and stand with me, my friend. So let's see, Tyler, what did your brother say about you? <laughs> huh? Michael said, Michael, remember what you said about your brother, Tyler? Remember what you said? You said we were all sitting around, and you said, Michael is a legend to me. <laughs> ah, brother's mysterious, and you're a legend. Well, you know, you're kind of a, uh, you're kind of a living legend here at Ohev Shalom, Tyler, you know? Uh, you have been singing for the past, what, two years, three years, two years? Three years, yeah, yeah, in the Cantor's Choir. The Cantor's Choir is 99% uh, female, and Tyler, you've come to call it Tyler? There's, there's another, there's another yeah, 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 I know. <laughs> Taking like poetic license, Tyler, you know? And we come to call it almost Tyler and the girls. It's, uh, and, uh, you know, I once said to myself, what's Tyler doing here singing in this choir? And, it just became very apparent to me that uh, you love to sing. God has blessed you with a beautiful voice. You love Judaism, and so you love everything that's connected to Judaism. You love Jewish music, you love our prayers, and so it doesn't matter, you know, if you're the only male. So one year there was another kid with you. I think we even made three at one time, but uh, you're there. You are a legend here at Oheb Shalom. You love to sing, you're musical, you play the piano, and you play uh, the drums. And I know your parents especially love you practicing the drums at home. It's just, uh, you know, they love to hear that beat and the xylophone. I hear you're, you're a pretty fine piano player, but somehow I have a sense that the drums is the perfect instrument for you, Tyler, right? You and the drums, you're, you're a perfect team, right? Because, you know, what do the drums do? You know, without the drums, you don't have the beats, right? Without the drums, there was a saying in, in yesterday's Torah portion, you know, everybody will go and just do what is, what's in their own eyes. No, you can't have everybody in the band doing what's in their own eyes. You've got to have somebody that holds them. You need a leader, right? You're the leader, Tyler. You're the leader playing the drums, but we look at you. You're a young man now at the age of 13, but we see in you a future leader. You know, I don't see that in everybody. But we see in you a future leader. Future leader to create the beat for others to follow you. We see in you a future leader just because of your personality, but even more deeply, Tyler, because we see in you that you really care. You care about the world. You care about people. Would that we had other leaders, or more leaders, who cared, truly cared about people. Uh, but you do. You would make a great leader. And so you and your brother have uh, done something I, I just, I, I, I'm amazed by it. Not only do you care, but you did something to respond. You and your brother, for your Bar Mitzvah project, put together a carnival, where you put together, what, like 10 different games, and uh, you had 25 was it families or 25? So 25 families, you're up to like close 100 people came to your backyard and they were doing this carnival. By the way, what are you doing this coming Purim? Huh? <laughs> yeah, we could use you and your brother about a Purim carnival, it would be good. And uh, then you had to decide, you know, where would the proceeds go? So Brian chose the American Cancer Society, so half of the proceeds went to the American Cancer Society, and you chose a Seeds of Peace which is an organization dedicated to peace, to bringing different peoples together, and especially bringing uh, Jews and Muslims, Israelis and Palestinians together. So that day, please God, will one day come, and your contribution uh, surely makes a difference and helps us, them, take a step forward. You're a leader, Tyler. Uh, you and your brother have been leaders of your family in the most wonderful way. But Marnie and Barry, I, uh, I have the world of respect for you for a lot of reasons, a lot of reasons. You know, this bar mitzvah today, this B'nai mitzvah, in so many ways is what a bar mitzvah should be. You know, it's, it's truly and deeply and thoroughly Jewish. When you thought about what the theme should be, it's something very Jewish, which people will find out uh, dealing with tzedakah, 
in the other room and giving and caring and the invitations coming from JNF. But, but my respect for you comes that when the boys were in third grade, they came home and they said, Mom, Dad, we want to start keeping kosher. You could have said, come on, you're eight years old. What are you talking, you know, what are you talking? Uh, but you didn't. You, you very wisely, you created a kosher month at home. So you wanted to see where they'd be after the month. Maybe they would have said, it's enough already. I miss God knows what, you know. Uh, but they didn't miss any of that, and they loved what you were taking on. So that one month turned into a year, and it turns into years. So Tyler, you and Brian are leaders at home, uh, as your parents are leaders and wonderful, wonderful, wonderful role models to you. And as you made that commitment when you were eight years old, that's what today is all about. Tyler, my friend, of making new commitments new commitments. I, I don't know exactly what they're going to be. They're not going to be my commitments for you. They're going to be your commitments, right? That you're now going to take on as a bar mitzvah. A lot of kids stand here as a bar mitzvah, Tyler, but in you, all of us who know you and love you, we know that there is a very special kesher, very special connection between your soul and the synagogue, between your soul and Judaism, between your soul and Ramah, and there is no question that that connection will just grow stronger and stronger and stronger. So you're, you're a teammate of your brothers, right? You play on the same team of Odyssey of the mind, right? So if I gave your brother a challenge, I can't help but end with a challenge to you. And that challenge to you, Tyler, my friend, is how do you take that special connection that you have and we so clearly see in you, that special connection to Judaism, and in this year to come and in years to come, make it stronger and deeper? And from this day on, you'll show us the answer. And more and more, we'll just say, like Michael does, he's a legend to me. Right, Michael? He's a legend to me. So, I can only give you the same two gifts that I just gave. Brian, first. Uh, our text, which contains uh, the story of our people uh, from the beginning. And we've continued to write Torah over the years to make that story continue until this day. So take that, learn from it, study it, cherish it. And again, this Kiddush cup that comes from Yerushalayim, from our beloved holy city in Jerusalem. You know, uh, Tyler, you who care about making a difference in the world, there is a place in Jerusalem. You'll visit it someday. It's called Yad Lekashish. It's one of my favorite places in Jerusalem. It's where elderly people, elderly Jerusalemites, and uh, others who have been hurt in life and uh, maybe damaged in some way, they come every day to this workplace and they create some of the most beautiful art. They made this Kiddush cup, so it really has very special meaning. The Certificate of Bar Mitzvah presented by Oif Shalom to Tyler Harris Stratch, Hershel Natan Ben, Avelvul Avram Umania, who having completed the required studies, is duly inducted as a Bar Mitzvah. This Rosh Kodesh Elul with our prayers and blessings, Yihir Fel Chobet Torat Adonai, may your portion be amongst those who live in labor, in the Torah of our God. Brian, mom and dad, Michael, grandparents, if you might all come and join us on the Bima. for this wonderful day let's join together in reciting Shafiano Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shafiano Bekemanu Bekemanu Azman Hazez We're about to invoke God's blessings on our B'nai Mitzvah If we'll all please rise Yemarechecha Adonai Brian Tyler, may the Lord bless you and guard you. 
Ya er Adonai, pana belecha, vichuneka. May the Lord make his countenance to shine upon you and to be gracious always unto you. Isa Adonai, pana belecha, v'yaseim lecha shalom. Tyler, Brian, may God continue to watch over each of you, both of you, as now you have attained the status of a bar mitzvah in Israel. May God bless you always with a blessing of shalom, of peace. And we all say together, Amen. Amen. Jill, Susan Wine to the Bima will offer what I think we'll all find to be a very meaningful story. It is called the Starfish Story. Jill? Once upon a time, there was a wise man who liked to go to the ocean to do his writings. He had the habit of walking along the beach before he began his work. One day, he was walking along the shore, and as he looked down the beach, he saw a human figure moving like a dancer. He smiled to himself to think of someone who would dance to the day, so he began to walk faster to catch up. As he got closer, he saw that it was a young man, and the young man wasn't dancing, but instead, he was reaching down to the shore, picking up something, and very gently throwing it into the ocean. As he got closer, he called out, Good morning, what are you doing? The young man paused, looked up and replied, throwing starfish into the ocean. The sun is up, the tide is going out, and if I don't throw them in, they will die. But young man, don't you realize that there are miles and miles of beach and starfish all along it? You can't possibly make a difference. The young man listened politely, then bent down, picked up another starfish, and threw it into the sea past the breaking waves. It made a difference for that one. His response surprised the man. He was upset and he didn't know how to reply, so instead he turned away and walked back to the cottage to begin his writings. All day long as he wrote, the image of that young man haunted him. He tried to ignore it, but the vision persisted. Finally, late in the afternoon, he realized that he had missed the essential nature of the young man's actions. He realized that what the young man was doing was choosing not to be an observer in the universe and watch it pass by, but was choosing to be a participant in the universe and make a difference. He was embarrassed. That night he went to bed troubled. When morning came, he awoke, knowing that he had to do something. So he got up, put on his clothes, went to the beach, and found the young man, and with him spent the rest of the morning throwing starfish into the ocean. Brian and Tyler, you have been blessed with many gifts. The gift of love, compassion, intelligence, good fortune, and the ability to make a difference in the world, tikkun olam. As you accept the responsibilities of becoming a bar mitzvah, may you always seek out your starfish and throw them into the ocean with as much love and care as possible, recognizing that each act of kindness, no matter how small, helps to build a better world. So it's one, one starfish at a time. When you travel throughout the land of Israel, you see hills that are just filled with the beauty of trees, gorgeous, strong, tall, beautiful trees. And as you see those trees, you know that but a century ago, 
that land was absolutely barren and empty. But those trees were lovingly planted by Jews throughout the world through the efforts of JNF, the Jewish National Fund, one tree at a time. So I'd like to invite Jerry Schatz, who is the president of the Bucks County region of the Jewish National Fund, who has a special presentation to our two B'nai Mitzvah uh, for their involvement and commitment to the planting of trees in Israel through JNF. Brian? Um, first of all, congratulations to you two were marvelous. I've really hardly ever spent such a wonderful morning. Um, Marnie and Barry, I don't know you yet, um, but I think you must be doing the most remarkable job with your family. I'm so, um, I'm sure all of you, as the rabbi mentioned when you got your invitations, in addition to being invited to uh, a bar mitzvah on a Sunday, we're also surprised to see it was from the Jewish National Fund. The Jewish National Fund has existed for over 100 years, and yes, we have planted many, many trees, millions of trees in Israel, but, but before that, we purchased the land of Israel. And Tyler, you mentioned something about Jews sticking together. One thing that Jews have done, the most marvelous thing that Jews have done, is we have purchased the land of Israel. That's what we've been doing for the last hundred years. We bought that land, we bought the land that now, that formed the outline that Britain used to create the modern state of Israel. That was land that Jews in the diaspora bought from the Turk, uh, Turks in the Ottoman Empire. And that is how we created the land of Israel. And those trees that we've planted were planted by Jews who came to the land of Israel. Jewish National Fund made it possible for them to have livelihoods. Today, we are building reservoirs, 165 so far. Many more to come. We're cleaning up rivers. And we're resettling many of the people. When uh, the settlements in Gaza have, were closed, uh, uh, Prime Minister Sharon turned to Jewish National Fund in Israel and has asked them to create the housing for the people who have had to leave Gaza. Uh, Jewish National Fund is now developing the Negev. We're going to bring 250,000 homes and people to the Negev. I'm so pleased that you've decided to be part of this. Um, because of the Drouch's commitment to Jewish National Fund, each of the gentlemen is getting a plaque that reads, as you become a bar mitzvah, we honor you and your friends and family who share in this special day with planting of the Barbara Dratch Memorial Garden. May you be as rooted to your heritage as these trees are to the earth, and may you bring beauty and strength to the world as these trees do to the land of Israel. Thank you very much from the Jewish National Fund. Yeah. Yeah. The only reason yours isn't plastic so it wouldn't rub up against you. And thank you for being such wonderful people to lead your sons this direction. Rabbi, thank you. I know, thank that, you, and I know Ohad Shalom is participating with Jewish National sure, Fund sure. in building a reservoir that is being built by American congregations. So thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Jerry. So let's turn now to the concluding part of our service. Let's rise for the Aleinu, which we'll find on page 97. I'd like to invite uh, Uncle and Aunt Scott and Jill Berger to join us on the Bima. The honor of opening the parocha at the curtain of the Aaron Kodesh, Aleinu 97.
Mel be seated. Include the Elena on the bottom of page 98. Kakatubatoratecha, Adonaim Lochle Olamba et Vene Emar, the Haya Adonai, the Melech Al Kohares, Bayom Hahu, Bayom Hahu, Ie Adonai Echat, Ushemo, Ushemo, Ushemo. sacred moment to call to mind the loving memory of our B'nai Mitzvah's grandmother, Barry, your dear mother, Barbara Dratch, who passed away about a month before the boys were born. Brian carries your mom's name. And both of uh, our young men on the Bima uh, are a source of pride and honor to her memory in so many ways. And the garden that you planted in Israel is lovingly planted in your Mother Barbara's loving memory. So on this day of joyful celebration, we call to mind her loving memory, all that she meant to you, Barry, and her loving influence to you, and through you, to your three sons, we offer the prayer that her memory be cherished always for a loving blessing. We'll find Kadish Yatom on page 99. Amen. <laughs> Le Ela Mim Kol Birakata Vishirata Tushpakata Vinekamata the Amira and Bi Olma V Imru Amen. Yehe Shlama Rabba Min Shmaya Bhai Malainu Via Kol Yisrael V Imru Amen. O se shalom bimro mav huya ase shalom. Aleinu via kol Yisrael V Imru Amen. Well, on behalf of our entire synagogue family here at Oyev Shalom, Marty and Barry, it's my really great pleasure to extend to you, to your family, to your friends, a Mazal Tov and this wonderful morning of your boys becoming Bar Mitzvah. Jerry just mentioned a few moments ago that she couldn't help but feel a very special spirit here in the synagogue. Uh, let me say that the cantor and I do this all the time. And today for us is a very special day because this is a very special Bar Mitzvah, B'nai Mitzvah experience where we see the love of Judaism really infused in everything that's happening here, happening here this morning. So God bless you and Mazal Tov. And after hearing Michael's rendition of the Chilach this morning, we can't wait until the day comes when we'll see Michael called to the Torah as a Bar Mitzvah. Michael's saying, what? 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 What's, he, what's he talking about? I got a little bit of time left. Uh, just after the service, I'm going to ask everybody to leave the sanctuary on my right, your left. I'm going to ask adults to uh, go up the stairs. There's a few stairs and then follow the yellow brick road. Uh, you'll get a little bit of exercise until you arrive at the kiddush room where the cocktail hour is going to take place. Kids, uh, when you leave the sanctuary, just make an immediate left. You'll be going into uh, the Rothman Family School building and uh, in the... Uh, area there you'll be having your cocktail hour just after we conclude with the Adon Olam, page 5. Adon Olam, page 5. Yeah. Adon Olam, Asher Malach, B'terem Ko Yitzir Nibra, Lord, <laughs> 
is the festival of the new moon which you assign to your people for all generations as a time of joyful celebration. Our God and God of our ancestors accept with favor and with love the prayers of your people Israel wherever they dwell as they stand before you and worship on this Rosh Chodesh new moon day. Eloheinu velohei avoteinu chadesh aleinu et achodesh hazeh letova velivracha our God and God of our fathers and mothers Grant that the new month of El be for us a month of goodness and blessedness. May it be, bring us joy and gladness, deliverance and comfort, sustenance and support. May it bring us life and peace. And we all say together, Amen. Amen. To all of you, Mazal Tov. Have a wonderfully joyful afternoon of celebration.